Blencathra via Sharp Edge is one of those routes that's on most serious hill walkers tick lists, and for good reason. Here at Gainer Sports we teamed up with Mammoth and we're going to tackle the route whilst testing out some of the excellent products along the way. I was testing the Crater Jacket, the Basque Pants and the Men's Pacific Crest Boots, which were all comfortable from the offset. The start of the walk gets your legs working and you quickly rise above the A66 to the shoulder of the mountain. It's steep but pleasant and doesn't really offer any indication of what lays ahead. It's only really as you round the eastern flank and approach Scalesbeck waterfalls that the true character of the walk begins to reveal itself. And once you're at Scales Tarn, the character of the walk has completely changed. Here, the whole area is dominated by the edge itself, which rises out of the ground like a frozen wave and puts the tarn into shadow. The whole scene looks imposing from here, and most people will stop to look at the edge, asking themselves if it's a good idea after all. Once you've checked your confidence, it's just a short walk up to the start of the edge, and you gain height fairly quickly. It's not long before the ground gets a little firmer on the foot, and the tarn begins to shrink below you, becoming a dark puddle a few hundred feet below. Legend says that the tarn is actually bottomless, so the already steepening drop takes on an even greater sense of scale, and that's not the only legend that's on this mountain. Blencathra is also cited as one of the locations for King Arthur's army, who it is said will rise one day when England needs them. Whether you believe this or not, the rocky atmosphere that surrounds you on the ridge certainly lends itself to these tales. As you progress further along the ridge, you begin to find that the hands and feet approach is probably wiser than just relying on feet alone, and the words slow and steady seem to fit the bill as the drops on either side continue to get bigger and steeper. Halfway along, the ridge eases for a moment, allowing for normal bipedal movement, which feels like a bit of a novelty. However, this doesn't last long as we approach the crux and the steepest part of the sharp edge. This is where we're back onto hands and feet movement. The Pacific Crest boots performed really well on this walk. Straight from the box, I found them extremely comfortable and they gave loads of support underfoot and around the ankle. Undoubtedly the Memo foam ankle cuffs played a big part in this. Plus, being both leather and Gore-Tex meant they were completely waterproof and highly breathable, which just added to the comfort. Any steep ground I came across was no problem, as the aggressive Vibram Soul unit really bit into the ground and held firm, whilst the motion control ensured solid foot placement. On the rockier ground, the rubber toe rand and the slightly stiffer sole gave me excellent protection and a solid platform to walk on. I'd definitely take these up with me again. The next short section forced me to put the camera away and concentrate on holding on. This is where the edge narrows to a polished ledge and turns your fingers into claws and your bottom into the fifth point of contact. I watched a few less confident parties turn back at this point and those that did come across looked relieved once they'd moved across it. On the other side of this is where the climb up Foul Crag begins. The climb is a series of gullies and rocky outcrops. You have to scramble your way up, which is good fun, and at this point the exposure has eased a little. It was all working hard at this point. The crater jacket that I'd had on for most of the day was performing really well. Although it wasn't raining, I'd previously worn it in the rain, and being Gore-Tex I had no problem keeping me dry. It worked well against the wind on the ridge, but its main plus for me was its comfort. It's an alpine fit, so allowed excellent freedom of movement, whilst being really robust, which it needed to be in this rocky environment. And being three layered, it was low in bulk and weight.
Even though I was working hard at this point, it never felt as though I was getting too warm, but it was equipped with pit zips if I needed to cool down anymore. The hood's also helmet compatible, so it would sit well on rope climbs and scrambles as well as walks. There's a final clamber to the top, and the ridge begins to shrink away behind you, and it's not long before the ground begins to become a little easier underfoot. bass pants were their legwear for the day and I can give them the highest praise by saying that I forgot that I was wearing them. The tight weave soft shell meant that wind was kept out and the slightly stretchy fabric meant that my leg movements weren't constrained at all. They are extremely tough and got quite a bashing on the rougher ground, withstanding everything I could throw at them. The vents on the thigh allow for extra air circulation and the adjusters on the ankle aperture meant I could get the perfect fit around the boots. A few final steps and you're on to the northern end of the mountain. It's then just a few minutes to the summit along a well-worn path. If you time it right and get up there for sunset like I did, you get some great views right across the national park. There was nothing left to do really but soak in those beautiful views, reflecting on the route I'd taken and the excellent kit that had helped me get there.